This is the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello everyone and welcome to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host, Josh Bombeck, and today's game will be pitting the team of Marcus Ellis and assistant coach Scott Highland versus Scott Grimes and returning player Andrew Vollenkamp. Welcome back to the bench, Scott and Andrew. Uh, let's start with our assistant coach, Scott. Why don't you take a minute to remind us about yourself? I'm Scott Highland. I um, live just north of Dallas. been down here about a year. Big Jets fan, so that's going about as well as it can three weeks into the season. So uh, I'm excited to be back and uh, have a good game. Awesome. And Mr. Ellis, how are you doing? And let us know what yours and Scott's team name is going to be. Well, I'm doing great. High school teams 4-0. Uh, had a big game on Friday and uh, they passed the test for sure. So uh, excited about that. The Mariners are trying to ruin my life and – the Seahawks, I don't even know what they are yet, but I did get to go to the watch the best team in college football last night, the Washington Huskies. And for that reason, and Scott, I know, fully agrees. And our team name is going to be the Penix, my dear. All right, Andrew, uh, how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Why don't you take a minute to remind us about yourself? Okay. I'm also about an hour north of Dallas. So starting to wonder if I've run into Scott before, <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty good. Um, getting a little excited. My son started playing football for the first time in middle school. His team is one and one and he made a, not a team, but a team, you know, the A team, they got A teams, B teams, but we joke that he made a team at least, which is one of the three possible selections there. But uh, everything's going pretty well. Cowboys let me down. I don't know when this will air, but uh, yeah. Two and one. I'm I'm sure by the time this airs, they would have let you down again. So like that's going to be pretty <laughs> relevant. Like... Two and three. Two and three by then. I don't know. All right, and last but not least, Mr. Grimes, how are you? And uh, let us know what you are and Andrew's team name is going to be. Yeah, I'm good. You know, um, we were talking before the recording that I decided that during football season, I'll sign up for these Sunday recordings based on the Sunday night game. So here I am. So that should tell you there's a crap game going on right now. Um, it's Raiders Steelers. So yeah, I, I don't really care and I'm not paying much attention. I'm, you know, I, it was brought to my attention, of course, by David because he's basically our historian at this point that I'm on an 11 game losing streak. So it's nice to know that the L train is really back and better than ever. So <laughs> let's go queue up the merch. It's really time for, this is like the, you know, the reboot of the L train. So excited to be back uh, on that. And, you know, I'm conflicted because I want to win. I like Andrew. I want him to win, but also like, you know, for the merchandise sales, I feel like I should just continue to lose. Um, <laughs> But with that being said, you know, Andrew and I have decided that regardless of what happens, you know, the Penix, my dear, and regardless of what happens tonight, we can't do worse than Colorado. So that's our team name. <laughs> that is true. Well, with that, let's kick it over to bench warmer emeritus Dan Lundberg for the rules. The game will consist of four quarters of play, each with different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from their points accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true benchwarmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. With that, let's, uh, let's get on to today's first quarter, which will be Sporting Haikus. Sporting Haikus. For this quarter, there will be four questions in haiku form. Each question is worth 25 points. Question one. Through the first two weeks... Two touchdowns thrown to his team, two to other teams. We'll check in. All right. The Penix Mightier is checked in. So 
we can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can uh, talk it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure on this. Again, based on the fact that there's, there's some bad quarter, there's been some bad quarterback play through two weeks, and there's been some really stout defenses. So I'm trying to see if that gets me anywhere. I mean, the Cowboys' defense has been excellent. They, I know they've scored a couple defensive touchdowns. All right, I'm thinking Zach, maybe Zach Wilson because he they played Dallas, they played Buffalo. I don't remember if he threw a pick six against the Bills or not because I pretty much stopped paying attention four plays into that game. Um, but maybe we can just go with Zach Wilson because he's awful. That's fine with me. All right, we're going to check in with Zach Wilson. All right, and the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? Well, we kind of had a similar conversation. Um, we were just trying to think of quarterbacks who thrown pick sixes that we knew of. Um, I knew Desmond Ritter did, but we also went with a Wilson, but we went with Russell Wilson, and that's what we're checking in with. So the correct answer is Justin Fields. Coming into the season, so before the season started, he had the ninth best odds to win MVP. What were the odds makers smoking? He's not a good quarterback. I mean, he doesn't have good coaching either. Well, okay, coaching coaching does have an effect. I will give you that. But he, if you're this bad, you're just this bad. But guess what? As a coach, he'll always get opportunities because every coach is arrogant enough to think that they can turn him around. Because he's so physically talented. Some somebody's gonna go. You know what? You know what? I can fix Justin Fields. All right, let's move on to question two. Third MLB team to hit 15K home runs, not Yankees or Giants. All right, we'll check in. All right, the Penix Mightier it's checked in. We can't do worse in Colorado. You guys can talk it out. So, and we're thinking teams that have been around for a long time, but also teams that. Had some had some guys that would hit some home runs, right? I don't, I, I can't really think of anyone from like the the White Sox, that franchise, or like the Reds, you know, that were really hitting a lot of home runs in you know the thirties, forties, you know. And then you got Boston, got the Braves, the Phillies, teams like that. I threw up Boston, but I was wondering. It just seemed to me Dodgers and Boston seem. I don't know if there's a a trick to this. That was the thing. I was thinking, man, at first, when it first was red, I was thinking, ah, oh, Dodgers, that's an easy answer. But I don't know if there's some sort of trick. Because I, I was thinking Red Sox or Dodgers originally, and I'm wondering if it's... Yeah. I mean, the, the Dodgers cert- the Dodgers definitely had some guys, right? They had some some really good players and guys that hit some home runs. So I definitely think they could be on there, the Red Sox too. But I do get what you're, what you're saying, as this could be kind of a an interesting fact toyed, right? And where it's like a team you wouldn't maybe expect, like the Tigers or something like that. I mean, I put Dodgers and Red Sox as options, wondering if they were types. You put Dodgers, so I'm okay if you want to go with uh, Dodgers. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, they are the team that that we both kind of thought of. And obviously, they've been around a long time. Yankees, Giants, Dodgers, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, you know? All right, I'm good checking with the Dodgers. If that's what you want, that's fine. Cool. You guys checking with the Dodgers? Yes, sir. All right. And the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? We had a, a similar conversation, kind of, you know, thinking of old teams, teams that hit a, a lot of home runs and, you know, recent recent history adding to that. Uh, so we actually checked in with the Braves. Oh, unfortunately, neither team is getting points. The correct answer is the Chicago Cubs. Oh. Really? Yeah, they just did it this last week. But the next five teams, one you guys answered one of them. The next in line is the Braves. I think they're about 30 home runs from 15,000 or something. like. They're pretty close. Then, then it's the Tigers, Red Sox, Orioles, and Reds. And they all those teams have at least 14,000. So the Dodgers are somewhere less than 14,000. We just thought, like, okay, goes all the way back to the Boston Braves, and then this current team has the most home runs ever in a season. So we were like, oh, maybe maybe it's that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I just want to point out to listeners that before we started recording, Josh said, I think this game will be pretty easy. I don't think you guys will get tripped up too much. And we're two questions in and there's no points. I I thought that was going to be the case. (laughs) But that's one, if you didn't hear about it this week or read about it this week, you you wouldn't have necessarily known. So literally exactly what I typed to Marcus. I said, that's one of those facts. If you hear it, it's going to stick in your head and you're going to know it. Otherwise, it's just a guess. So from this point on, you'll remember who the third team to hit 15,000 home runs. is. All right, let's move on to question three. I have better feelings about this one for you guys. On ESPN, most watched late night game ever in state rivalry. All right, well, chicken. All right, Penix Mightier has checked in. We can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it out. So we were thinking, kind of fits our name, but we were looking at the Colorado-Colorado State game because I, rem- I know that they talked about, there were a lot of viewers, I know that they were talking that they sold out all of their home games, every single ticket. So that's what I had typed over to Scott. If he agrees, said he thinks so. So I'm okay with that if Scott's okay yeah, all the hype leading up to it with the coaches back and forth. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I, I think that I'd be surprised if it was anything else. It's fitting with our name, so I like it. We'll go with Colorado, Colorado State game. Okay, and the Penix Miter, what did you guys have? Yeah, we uh we both we both uh kind of shot it over pretty quick. Like I'm pretty sure this is the Colorado, Colorado State game because everybody's got their eyes on it. And I hate that Oregon had to be the ones to do it, but when you storm the field after you beat somebody you were favored by 21 points over, uh, you pretty much knew it was over. So, uh, yeah, we also checked in with Colorado versus Colorado State. (laughs) Finally, some points on the board for both teams. The correct answer is the Colorado-Colorado State game. Uh, That game was the most watched college football game of the season through the first three weeks, at least, averaging 9.3 million viewers. Yeah, uh, this week, a little bit of a come back down to earth and, yeah, you realize you're still Colorado. Yeah, they got a they got a they got a long road ahead this year. Let's move on to question four. MLB record K's in first 50 starts. Atlanta Braves ace. Checked in. All right. We can't be, we can't do worse than Colorado has checked in. So the Penix mightier, you guys can talk it out. We, we get to talk it out finally. Gosh, got a great mustache. Yeah. I'm I'm picturing him. (laughs) That doesn't help. Are you want me to draw a picture? I mean, if you drew a, if you drew an accurate picture, I might give you <laughs> give us bonus points. <laughs> <Half> points. <laughs> All right, Scott, you you good to check in? Uh, if you want to. Oh, oh, I thought you knew it too. No, no, no. Oh, it's Spencer Strider. Oh, I'm I, no, no. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I had him mixed up with two guys in the Braves, and I was like, I don't know which one. It was like him and Freed, and I cannot get off of either one of them, like David. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, they're 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 young stars, so that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so we will check in with Spencer Strider. All right, and we can't do worse than Colorado. What did you guys have? Yeah, it's, it's Spencer Strider. See, now we've settled into a groove. Both teams are getting points. Correct answer is Spencer Strider. He struck out 435 batters in his first 50 games. Second is now Dwight Gooden with 418, followed by you Darvish with 407. That's pretty impressive. All right, after the first quarter, uh, each team has 50 points, so it's all tied up. Today's second quarter will be Curriculum Vitae. Curriculum Vitae. In this round, the hosts will list the teams and years for which a player spent time and may also give a few fun facts about each player. Each question is worth 20 points. I thought curriculum Vitae was Jelani Vitae's brother, and he played like O he played O he played O line at Villanova or something. I thought it was a new strain of herpes. Halitopi Vitae, right? Is the other one? Yeah, I think. <laughs> something like that. Question one: 2004 draft first round, 2004 to 06 Utah Jazz. 
2006 to 09, Toronto Raptors. 2009 to 10, Dallas Mavericks. 2010 to 13, New Jersey slash Brooklyn Nets. 2013 to 14, Boston Celtics. 2014 to 16, Washington Wizards. And then also in 2016, Phoenix Suns. And to round out his career, 2016 to 17, Atlanta Hawks. Oh my gosh. He was also Minnesota Mr. Basketball, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. And he is an ex husband of Kim Kardashian. Oh, thank God. It sucks that that's the giveaway. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> You're welcome. I was going to be in the weeds with this for hours. I'm trying to figure out if I actually could have figured this out, sorting through all of that without that fact. I honestly don't think I would have. No, I don't think I would have. There's either. nothing. I, without Kim Kardashian, I still don't know if I would have gotten it. I, I honestly don't think I would have. <laughs> Once you said no. Minnesota Mr. Basketball, I went, okay, white. I said Wally Zerbiak, and that didn't make sense. In my mind, I'm like, okay, a white guy. And, no, I think I you're disrespecting one of your fellow... Africans. I love the hesitation. Yeah. Like you were you were looking to make sure me and Scott were gonna be like, you're a, that's okay. You know, I, I always tread lightly, <laughs> right? Tread lightly. All right, I that's a wrap. That wrap it up, guys. I'm pretty done. sure Chris Humphrey is in the can. Oh man, crew. Yes, you're talking about Jalen Suggs, obviously. <laughs> right? No. He's talking about the answer the of his question. Answer. Neither of us have checked oh. in with him. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll, let's do We'll let's check do this. in. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we can't do worse than Colorado has checked in, so Penix Mightier. You guys probably don't need to talk it out anymore, I'm guessing. No. Wait a minute. He's half black? What? Marcus. Yeah, he is. He's 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 one of us. Yep. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. We got to get, we got to keep this on the tracks. <laughs> We're going to check in a- and Chris Humphreys. I should just let this, I should just let this go. Why did I, I, why did I Google this? I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. But uh... one of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we can't do worse in Colorado. What did you guys have? Yeah, we we also checked in with with Chris Humphreys. <laughs> the both teams would be getting points. The correct answer is Chris Humphreys. Sadly, he will most likely be remembered for his seventy-two day marriage to Kim. I didn't realize he floated around for as long as he did. He was a good player. He was a good role player, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember him probably post Celtics like that, that 2014 to 2017. When you name those teams, I was like, I don't remember him playing for like for NBA 2K has him too highly rated when he, if y'all have played it, they have like a LeBron era. And I don't know if I downloaded whoever made him or he was in there. His ratings like an 82, 84. <laughs> he got that Kardashian ratings bump. Check out Tristan Thompson next time you get a chance. See what his rating is on there. All right, moving on to question two in CV. 2007 to 12, McLaren. 2013 to present, Mercedes. Seven-time F1 World Drivers Championship. F1 career leader in wins, pole positions, points, and podium finishes. First and only black driver in F1 history. We'll check in. All right. The Penix Mightier has checked in. We can't do worse in Colorado. You guys can talk it out. That is one of only two F1 drivers I know, I think, besides Max for stopping. So if you if you want to go with that, we can go with Lewis Hamilton. I'm fine. Josh, we're checking in. Lewis Hamilton. All right. And the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? Picked him, same thing, Lewis Hamilton. See, we've settled into a groove now, right, guys? All right, good. First couple questions were a little rocky, but yes, the correct answer is Lewis Hamilton. Uh, He is a member of the Order of the British Empire and a Knight Bachelor. All right, John, I see what you're doing here, right? You started us off with with a air quotes African. Then you gave us a black guy that plays a white sport. I'm expecting like the darkest MF forever for this answer now because you're building us up. This is going to be Dennis Schroeder, right? Like it's got to be. Um, let's just move on to question three. You give me too much credit for thinking I think about these things. This makes, me, this makes me think of, this was long before Wesley Snipes. You know, All back right. then we were the blackest dudes on the planet. <laughs> According to Rick James. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to question three. 2008 draft first round. 2008 to 14, Chicago Sky. 
2015 to 22, Minnesota Lynx, two time WNBA champion and finals MVP, one time WNBA MVP, four time WNBA Defensive Player of the Year, WNBA Career Rebounding Leader, WNBA 25th Anniversary Team, and four time Olympic gold medalist. Marcus, did you try saying something there? That's embarrassing. I'm a professional. We're going to check in. The Penix Mightier has checked in. We can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it out. I, I don't think I have this. Man, Chicago to Minnesota and seemingly retired, I would imagine, after the 2022 season since there's nothing current. So someone that just retired and is won an MVP and is the career rebounding leader. I don't know that I have this. What are you thinking, Andrew? I got it. Nothing. I could maybe name a couple dozen WNBA players. And I don't think any of them fit at least a third of these. I'm going to go with like Lisa Leslie, if you ask me. No, and she was definitely not in the first I round in 08. No. Cheryl okay, Eid. No, Cheryl it's not Swoops. Cheryl Swoops. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, man, I I'm trying to think. Cheryl Miller? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. In the, I'm trying to think. The, the, the USC the game I went to a few weeks ago, Cheryl Miller was the she was honored. She ran the team out onto the field. It was actually pretty cool. But no, no, she didn't just she didn't just play for the Lynx in 2022. It's been a little bit for her. Um, man, like like I said, I always see these stats and I think Tina Charles, but it doesn't that doesn't fit. Let's just go Tina Charles because it's a name. All right, and the Penix Mightier. What did you guys have? The clue that helped me the most was the career rebounding leader because. I think Scott and myself can kind of call ourselves the WNBA guys of this podcast. And we've, I've, I've written plenty of questions about the WNBA and there's a name that popped in my head through it by Scott. Scott liked it. We were checking in with Sylvia Fowles. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is Sylvia Fowles. She finished her career with 4,007 rebounds and her number 34 is retired by both LSU and the Lynx. I honestly didn't know she played for the sky. That was like part of it that was throwing me off. Cause I just, I just think of Sylvia Fowles. I think of Minnesota. I didn't remember where she came from before she came to the links. Cause I knew that she had been in the league. I just didn't know where moving on to question four, the last in the round 2003 draft first round 2003 to 17 Pittsburgh penguins 2017 to 21 Vegas Golden Knights, 2021 to 22, Chicago Blackhawks, 2022 to present, Minnesota Wild, three-time Stanley Cup champion, one-time Vezina Trophy winner, NHL active leader in wins, and one-time Olympic gold medalist. We can check it. Penix Mightier has checked in. Can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it out. It's hockey. So that sucks. Vezina is is the uh, is goalie. So the goalie for the Penguins when they were really good. I think that's Tim Thomas. I don't know. They haven't followed his career since he left Pittsburgh. So I don't, I don't know like where else he would have played. That's a lot of bouncing around here recently. I know Tim Thomas, the basketball player. The Villanova, baby. Knicks legend, Tim Thomas. Yeah, I, I, I know Tim Thomas played for Pittsburgh for a long time. That That's what I got, so... All right, we're going to check in with Tim Thomas. Okay, and the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? Scott, you had the right colors, wrong team for Tim Thomas. He was in Boston. That's uh, This This is uh, Mark andre Fleury. One team will be getting points. The correct answer is the flower, Mark andre Fleury. That is the end of the second quarter, and we don't have a tie anymore. Can't do worse than Colorado has 100, and the Penix Mightier has 150. And that brings us to halftime. It is now time for the halftime show. There will be three entertainment questions. Each question is worth 25 points. It's time for another edition of Chat GPT pre and post game. <laughs> I asked Chat GPT to make up plots for movies based on the combination of two movies, with at least one being a sports movie. Plot number one. A washed-up boxer discovers he possesses extraordinary superhuman abilities, 
With his newfound powers, he embraces his dual identity as both a boxing legend and a superhuman defender of justice. As he battles opponents in the ring, he also faces a formidable enemy threatening to destroy his city, forcing him to step up as a hero and protect the innocent. Balancing his personal struggles and his duty as a protector, he becomes a symbol of hope and inspiration for both the boxing world and humanity at large. I think that works. We're going to check in. All right. We can't do worse than Colorado has checked in. The panic's mightier. You guys can talk it out. Okay. It just came to me. Oh, good. Because I'm like, this is every superhero movie. He finds out he has powers. I was like, this doesn't help. You said Cinderella, man, and that gave us another... I mean really what we were doing is just naming boxing movies and try to go off of that a symbol of hope and inspiration always leads me to superman and the uh zack snyder one is called man of steel so i think we go cinderella man of steel and batman doesn't have powers but you're right wealth is a power wealth is a power (laughs) (laughs) so uh we're checking in cinderella (laughs) man of steel hey and the panics might hear what do you guys have we did the exact same thing. <laughs> We're like, let's just name boxing movies. <laughs> like, So then in our chat, it's Cinderella Man, Ali, The Fighter, Southpaw, Hurricane, Rocky, Creed. Like, We're just naming and then trying to see how it fits. And then, yeah, it came to me. It's like, yes, one of the Superman movies was actually called Man of Steel. So we also checked in with Cinderella Man of Steel. Both teams will be getting points. The correct answer is Cinderella Man of Steel. Okay, should we move on to plot number two? The story is set in the streets of 19th century Manhattan, where rival gangs fiercely control their territories. In this volatile environment, a passionate and determined coach establishes a football program within the rival gangs as a means to unite them and channel their aggression onto the field. As the teams clash in exhilarating football games, they discover that the bonds formed on the football field have the power to transcend their differences and break the cycle of violence plaguing their communities. We're checked in. We can't do worse than Colorado is checked in. The panic's mightier. You guys can talk it out. I'm just picturing Daniel (laughs) Day-Lewis. I was trying to cast this movie as I was replacing the rock. Now I'm picturing Exhibit and Daniel Day-Lewis on screen at the same time. I'm so sorry. I just want to see Daniel Day-Lewis with a clipboard and a headset on. Oh, man. A Belichick Belichick sleeveless hoodie. (laughs) So Gridiron Gangs of New York, is that what we're doing? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. That's what we were checking in with. And we can't do worse than Colorado. What did you guys have? Oh, you, Andrew. Oh, yeah. I, I got in on it real early. I put Gridiron Gangs of New York. Both teams will be getting points. The correct answer is Gridiron Gangs of New York. I'm just thinking of Daniel Day-Lewis as Will- William the Butcher, <laughs> but coaching football. <laughs> You've got to hit the down block. <laughs> All right, let's move on to plot three. The film tells the story of a charismatic and rebellious music teacher who uses his unorthodox teaching methods to ignite a passion for music in his students. Along the way, he befriends an aging boxing legend who becomes his mentor and helps him discover a hidden talent for boxing. As the students embrace their musical talents and the teacher hones his boxing skills, they all face personal and collective challenges that test their determination and resilience. Through the power of music and boxing, the film showcases the transformative impact of mentorship, the importance of pursuing one's passions, and the triumph of the human spirit in overcoming obstacles. We're checked in. You're checked in? <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, no. uh, we can't do worse than Colorado's checked in, so the panic's mightier. You guys can talk it out. Is that it? Yeah. It's not the first avenue I went down. No. My notes are actually very comical on this one. But, I wasn't even like I wasn't even there, but yeah, School of Rock does fit. <laughs> School of Rocky, aging boxing legend. So we got to add to it. So this has got to be Rocky Balboa because he was old. Okay, okay, checking in. School of Rocky Balboa. <laughs> okay, and we can't do worse than Colorado. What did you guys have on these last two? I haven't been able to keep it together while you're reading it because so many things are running through my head and luckily Andrew has been on top of it just throwing them in the chat so we have the same thing School of Rocky Balboa 
Well, it wasn't initially my intended Rocky, but I will give credit for that. Um, I will accept either School of Rocky Five or School of Rocky Balboa, because I guess in both of those he's an aging mentor. So he was aging in the first one. What do you mean? <laughs> well, that is true. That is true. But uh, I'm just now trying to picture if I'm thinking Rocky Five uh, is Jack Black as uh, Tommy Gunn. Tommy Mars. <laughs> That's a that's a very different movie. <laughs> or or just like what if you aged up Jack Black and he was Mickey in like any in the rock in the original now that Rocky would movies? work. I think that would work. You're a bum rock. I wrote you a song. <laughs> so after halftime, uh the difference hasn't changed what the scores have. We can't do worse than Colorado is at 175 and the Penix Mightier is at 225. Now on to the second half. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks. Today's third quarter will be The Missing Link. The Missing Link. This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question... They will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question one. What Hall of Fame offensive tackle played his entire 20-year career with the Rams franchise? We'll check in. All right, the Penix Mightier is checked in, so we can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it out. Yeah, I think that's got to be it. That's the only name that I could think of, unless it's somebody else. Then probably yeah, not. Orlando Pace jumped to mind. I just did he really play until like, twenty seventeen? That I don't know, but it's the that only... seems like a long time for him. It's a while. Uh, is he in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So, Hall of Fame offensive tackle. That's. Yeah, I, only Rams player that because I I'm I list. can't yeah I can't really think of of another one that was exclusively on the Rams unless it goes back you know a lot farther or yeah yeah I guess maybe he did play that long uh but yeah since we don't have anything else we'll check in with Orlando Pace okay and the Penix mightier what did you guys have same thing Orlando Pace. Uh, no points will be awarded. Unfortunately, can I, can I he only leave? played okay. thirteen okay. seasons. Yeah, I didn't think he once played Scott, that long. Once Scott it, said it, I went. That yeah, doesn't sound same. right at all. Two thousand seventeen is is it Jackie Slater? The correct answer is Fuck. Jackie Slater. He played nineteen seasons in Los Angeles from nineteen seventy six to ninety four. And one in St. Louis in 1995. I'm so mad if I had even if we had even thought about it for five more seconds about the 20 years, then I would have had been able to get to Jackie Slater. Yeah, I was I was just thinking I'm like, there's nowhere Orlando Pace was playing in like 2017. But they have had two offensive tackles make yeah. the Hall of Fame playing their entire career with the franchise. So that's pretty. Jason, impressive. Jason Smith didn't play his whole career. Oh man, <laughs> Greg Robinson. <laughs> All right, moving on to question two. What five-time first-team All-Pro special teams player for the Buffalo Bills finished his career with 204 special team tackles and seven blocked punts? All right, we will check in. All right, the Penix Mightier is checked in. We We can't do worse in Colorado. You guys can talk it out. I... I, a special teams player? I don't know. And not even like a guy that was an all-pro for being a kick returner that maybe I could get. But 
Yeah, no, no idea. I don't, I don't pay attention to who blocks punts. Finish his career, so he's he's not even active. So, yeah, we can just throw out a last name because I don't. I have no idea. I was just only going off of what we thought the theme was. If you want to try one of the last names, That's I don't awesome. because that'll give away what we might be thinking, and I don't want to do that. So. This is probably a guy that played when they were good in the nineties. Let's let's just assume that for the Bills. So let's go with Jennings. How do you how do you feel about Jennings? Sounds good. Sure. We're gonna check in with Jennings. All right, and the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? <laughs> <laughs> oh geez, sorry. Um <laughs> So uh, Scott, Scott came forward <laughs> with a Don Beebe, and I we we had a good laugh because uh, and Scott said he didn't he took a little offense because uh, I said I it's either him I go but I think it might be Steve Tasker and I said I don't know they're both short white guys that, and I get them confused sometimes but uh, I was pretty positive that uh, Steve Tasker made multiple. Pro Bowls. I didn't know he was a first team All Pro, but I know he made a bunch of Pro Bowls as a, you know, a, like a gunner on special teams. So uh, we checked in with Steve Tasker. One team will be getting points. Correct answer is Steve Tasker. He played in seven Pro Bowls and became the only special teamer ever to be named the game's MVP in 1993. So yeah, there you go. The theme linked answers thus far are Jackie Slater. And Steve Tasker. Moving on to question three. What first round draft pick by the Los Angeles Clippers in 1990 was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year and led Loyola Marymount Lions to the Elite Eight during his senior season? All right, we'll check in. All right, the Penix Mightier has checked in. We can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it over briefly, but I'll need an answer pretty shortly. Um, yeah, trying to figure out a way to go about it. You're going through the 2K. I'm trying to again, go through the draft. Yeah, I mean, I have names. Um, I used to make oh, uh, do oh. Name rosters. But I if you can think just, of any of the names, I think that's in, that's one of the other guys' names. I, I think you just. Together. I think you just sent it to me. Yeah, I think it's Bo Kimball. Okay. He's yeah. He was definitely a Clipper. He's. I'm pretty sure he's in that draft. That's a pretty weak draft, right? Derek Coleman draft. Um, I think it's Bo Kimball. Sounds good with me. I just listed some guys that I knew that I threw on that were on the like nine <laughs> roster. I, anytime someone someone names name drops Loy Vaught, that's a, that's a great drop to me. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for that, Andrew. So you're welcome. Uh, in honor, add him into the uh, Clippers all time teams. That's you that's know, a shame. He was a he, he was a he was a decent offensive rebounder in his career. So I don't know why they would omit him from something like that. Um, we're going to check in with Bo Kimball. All right. And the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have? Same, same answer, Bo Kimball. Both teams will be getting points. The correct answer is Bo Kimball. And I didn't use the bit about him shooting free throws left-handed because mm-hmm. David used that in a question prior in uh I think in a missing link himself. So, and he starred in a 1991 sports movie, Heaven is a Playground, as a fictional high school student, Matthew Lockhart. You have such a white name. <laughs> Matthew Lockhart. That's, uh, it is what it is. All right. The theme linked answers thus far are Jackie Slater, Steve Tasker, and Bo Kimball. Moving on to question four. What left-handed pitcher was the American League strikeout leader three times in the 1980s while pitching for the Mariners? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're going to check in. All right. The Penix Mightier has checked in. Uh, We can't do worse than Colorado. You guys can talk it out for about a minute. You know, as much as I grew up with and have such an affinity and love for the 90s Mariners. The 80s Mariners is a huge black hole for me. Like, I 
I don't know if I can name a player that played for them in the eighties that's not Ken Griffey Jr. or like or senior. Senior. Eh, like junior. Yeah. I, well obviously yeah, I know junior real, is. real tail end. The real tail end. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It yeah, counts. It counts. It, it counts. That is true. That is true. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I, I, let alone a pitcher for them, I couldn't tell you. Like I said, the name I had was Mark Langston. He was a lefty. I, I don't know who he played for in the 80s. I remember him from just the 90s. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know, Andrew. I don't, I don't have anything. I, I'm not sure I'm thinking of the right people. Oh, okay. I don't. Uh, pitched in the 80s. I don't, I don't, I don't think he did. I think he. I think he was. 80s anyway. I think he was early 90s. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're just gonna check in with Mark Langston. Okay. And the Penix Mightier. What did you guys have? Well, we weren't gonna check in right away. Give them a lot of time to talk stuff out. But yeah, this guy uh, helped us land the big unit, Randy Johnson, and I thank him for it all the time. <laughs> and yeah, we are checking in with Mark Langston. <laughs> Let's go. Both teams will be getting their points. The correct answer is Mark Langston. It's the I only reason go. I remember, the only reason I remember him is because of the trade. <laughs> it's and, like he uh, must have been kind of good. He pitched a combined no hitter with Mike Witt for the angels on April 11th, 1990 mm-hmm. against the Mariners. It didn't look good early. Randy Johnson was a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The theme linked answers thus far are Jackie Slater, Steve Tasker, Bo Kimball, and Mark Langston. We'll move on to question five. What is the shared nickname of former MLB pitcher Tom Henke, eight time Grand Slam winner Yvonne Lendl? And rookie defensive end Will Anderson Jr. Didn't know he had a nickname yet. Yep, same. No, he no, blocked no. a kick today, though. He pulled a Steve Tasker today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you let's go with it. That's fine. Yeah, okay. we're gonna check in. All right, the Penix Mightier is checked in, so we can't do worse than Colorado. You guys have about a minute to talk it out. If you think you can get there, otherwise we could just move on. I'll, I'll leave that to Andrew. I, I'm not going to get there. Um, I, need, I can't. I'm trying to think about what the the link and how it link is. Like, yeah, yeah me too. I keep trying to look at because I thought we had it at the first, but we didn't. Yeah, I I'm very far off from any sort of link, which is unusual for me. I feel like. I can at least usually leverage that to work my way into an answer, but in this case, definitely can't do that. So, um, you want to use yours? I think that was like Will Will Clark. It right? was. You're right. Will the uh, Thrill? Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't think they're calling. I, well, I don't think Tom the Thrill Hanky. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy, man. They have in common, like, what they we, have nothing I in common. One of them. No, they have one thing in sacks. common. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Their nickname. One of, sacks. one of them throws strikes. One of them. And one of them serves. They all do S <laughs> things. Tennis ball. Sacks, <laughs> strikes, and serves. Sacks, strikes. <laughs> oh, oh, my word. Yeah. That, uh. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Um, Will and don't even. Where there's a will that no, I, I literally Sanks. nothing. Ivan Sanks, Tom, Sanks. yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're, we're checking, in, checking in with Sack Master. <laughs> what does that have to do with <laughs> that's what they called him off the court? I was like, he didn't get the nickname while playing Tan. Never mind. Never mind. All right, well, how about right, the, the Penix, my dear? What did you guys have for an answer? <laughs> um. Yeah, none none of this just off the hoof, you know, made us excited. But we think we might know the theme, and that usually helps. Kind of so, work backwards into it. Yeah. So uh, what did we come up with, Scott? Uh, we're going to check in with the Terminator. One team will be getting points. 
the correct answer is the Terminator. And uh, I thought since you guys are draft guys and you watch so much draft stuff, you would have noticed the chain that Will Anderson Jr. wore, which had half of it was the Terminator face with a ruby for the eye on his chain that was like right there for you to see. I thought maybe you guys would have uh, seen that. If you didn't know I that, pro- yeah. I probably have heard it because I listened to so many draft podcasts, but Same. it yeah. went over my head. Like, so yeah, so he, so he was wearing that. So he, he was given that uh, nickname at. He went to Alabama, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So at Alabama, he was given that nickname, and then he wore that chain. If you look it up, it's kind of a cool chain. I mean, it's a little big, but all those guys wear big chains and stuff. To the you know, uh, I don't get it, but you know, I'm an old white guy, right? I don't know. Um, better than a small white guy. I don't know. I'm, Steve, Ta- I'm definitely Steve Tasker not, is a five-time All-Pro. I am definitely not a Steve Tasker. I'm not a small white guy. I'm a big white guy. Um. So the theme-linked answers are Jackie Slater, Steve Tasker, Bo Kimball, Mark Langston, and the Terminator. Both teams initially checked in with incorrect guesses. But one team sent in a second guess, which is correct, and that was the Penix Mightier. So we can't do worse than Colorado. You can take a couple of minutes to try and figure out the theme. Okay, we got it, right? It's got to be that because... You guys can talk out loud. You can actually say the I thing. I think yeah. that's what they call Okay, okay. I think that is what they call him. I think the movie is The Sixth Day. It's the one where like he's cloned and he goes in. Like he runs into his son and everything. And they that's that's not ha- that's not half of his movies. He's cloned ha- involved oh, clones. I was thinking of it, but obviously the other one. Yeah, let's just go with uh, roles that Arnold Schwarzenegger's played. I like the title of his character, though. I think it's the t- the name his character goes by would be more yeah. scientific. Yeah. Okay, and the Penix Mightier. What did you guys have? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We uh we submitted very early because. <laughs> I I very much like to jump the gun and see if I can just get it right off of two. And then as soon as you finish reading the third question and we're and Scott and I are both like Bo Kimball, but that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't fit. That is that is and then not... and then yeah, we realize oh that's not not right. But the answer Bo Kimball brought me to John Kimball, and then I remembered that uh Tasker was his last name in uh, True Lies. And I was like, oh, I think these are Arnold Schwarzenegger characters. And uh, I Langston didn't help, but we just, I just was like, let's just submit it because I don't know. It doesn't matter yeah. now at this point. So, and then when the nickname thing came up, I was like, well, it's the fifth question. It's the giveaway. And uh, I don't know. I, I kind of like Scott's. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. it's. I, I feel like we should save that one. The first, the first one's good. <laughs> okay, we'll save that one. That's, uh, a, that's a good missing link for later. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyways, we uh, we also checked in with uh, characters that Arnold Schwarzenegger has played. Well, since both teams had initially checked in with wrong guesses, they could only get 50, but both teams will be getting 50 points because, yes, those are Arnold Schwarzenegger roles. He was Detective Jack Slater in The Last Action Hero. Mm. He was Agent Harry Tasker in True Lies. Detective John Kimball in Kindergarten Cop. Not a Tuma. Howard Langston in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> oh, that's and he nice. was the Terminator T-800 and T-850 in the Terminator franchise. <laughs> I forgot that he had a normal name because every time I watch Jingle All the Way, I'm like, oh, there's that big Austrian guy, the only Austrian guy in all of Minnesota or wherever. That's Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if I ever knew his last name. Howard Langston. Langston. I, I knew. I remember Howard because his wife kept saying it throughout the movie. I don't know. Oh. So I, they, they might. They may or may not. I've never seen the movie, so they may or may not say their last Howard name. I yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they do. But I, I, I mean, thought I, that I might have been. I thought that might have been if you guys did know it. That you guys would have definitely probably seen Jingle All the Way. So I thought oh, we'll put that one in many forward. times. Definitely many have. times. J- Jamie. <laughs> Jimmy. Is that is Turbo Man talking to me? You mean your dad? <laughs> your All dad right. with his accent. 
So after the third quarter, we have the following scores. We can't do worse than Colorado's at 265, and the Penix Mightier is at 355. That brings us to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. This quarter consists of four categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each, not to exceed their current point total. The categories for today are as follows. Question one, raw deal. Question two, predator. Question three, the running man. Question four, red heat. Uh, Raw deal is in reference to the NBA. Predator is in reference to the NFL. The running man is in reference to the Olympics. And red heat is in reference to Major League Baseball. It is now time for the teams to place their wagers. Now that the wagers are in, on to the questions. Question one. In the category of raw deal, what Philadelphia 76ers head coach was the last head coach to be fired during the first season of their first head coaching job? This happened after 52 games of the 2003-04 season. He had previously served as the head coach for the Ohio State Buckeyes from 1989 to 1997. Yeah. Yeah, 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 let's do it. We'll check it. All right, the Penix Mightier has checked in, so we can't do worse in Colorado. I'm going to need an answer pretty quick here. Yeah, we just got to throw out a name. To check in with one of Larry Brown's assistant coaches. (laughs) (laughs) While true, I would need the actual name. Let's throw out, we'll throw out a Lucky Smith. So we'll, we'll check in with Smith. Sure. How many points? A hundred. Oh, and the Penix Mightier. What'd you guys have for an answer and wager? Uh, we, we, we checked in with the most fireable name we could think of. Uh, Randy O'Neill. For how many 90. points? 90. Okay. Well, one of you had the first name correct. Oh. But not Lucky? the last name, so... Lucky? Lucky. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Lucky? Who the correct that? answer is Randy Ayers. Ugh. Before Ayers, no you have to go yeah. back to the 99-2000 season when Gar Hurd was fired after 44 games with the Washington Wizards. Then back to the 1992-93 season when Jerry Tarkanian was fired after only 20 games with the San Antonio Spurs. All right, let's move on to question two in the category of Predator. What three-time All-Pro defensive end who recorded the fifth most sacks since 2000 during his 15-year NFL career with three teams was nicknamed the Predator? Yeah, that, that's good. We'll check in. All right, the Penix Mightier is checked in, so we can't do worse than Colorado. I'm going to need an answer in your wager here pretty quickly. And we just got to pick from the list of names that we have. Like the 10 of them that we got? Well, which one? Yeah. Scott pointed out. It's three teams. Typically, someone with that nickname has dreads. They they refer to players with dreadlocks as predators, but none of the guys really fit that we have on our list. So we just need to pick one that played for three teams. You tell me, Jared, which I think of the list we have, not many of them played for three teams. Uh, let's go. I mean, Mario Williams played for Miami, the Bills, and the Texans. That's three teams. And played for more. I think Ware and Allen, I don't think played. Well, I, I don't think they called Jared Allen the. I don't think Jared <laughs> Allen had. He doesn't quite fit. Yeah, so let's. I, the, I think the only one I just went through him that played for three teams is Mario Williams. That's fine with me. So we we obviously don't don't know it for sure. So all right, we'll check in with Mario Williams for sixty five points. 
Okay, and the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have for an answer and a wager? Well, we did a lot of the same thing that you guys did. We're just trying to come up with guys that we think are at the top of this list. Um, Obviously, Taylor and Strahan would be up there, but that's not their nickname. Uh, yeah. We also yeah, thought Javon Curse. With, yeah, we <laughs> thought of Dudes with Dreads. Um, and we got to John Abraham, and I don't ever remember him being called the Predator, but I know he's up there in sacks in the 2000s, so... I mean, we just decided that that's the best we could do <laughs> without without knowing it for real. So we checked in with John Abraham for 90 points. Okay. And uh, just to let those of you knowing, if you've been listening to the back catalog recently, uh, going back to episode 29, this was actually a Dean's List by Dan. I figured it was so far removed that having an answer out of the bunch wasn't going to hurt. <laughs> um, one team will be getting their points. The correct answer is John Abraham. What? Oh of my course it gosh. Is. So, Scott, uh, great Scott. That, that so was all you, buddy. he definitely didn't have dreads. He was uh, oh. a clean shaven, bald headed guy. Um, yeah. So Abraham finished his career with 133 and a half sacks. Others on the most sacks since 2000 lists list. Um, and I have sacks, years, teams, and all pros if you're interested. But Julius Peppers is first on the list. Terrell Suggs is second. Demarcus Ware is third. Jared Allen is fourth. John Abraham, as previously mentioned, is fifth. Dwight Freeney is sixth. And Von Miller is seventh. Well, the difference went from 100 to 255 so we don't need to talk much more about that let's move on to question three in the category of the running man matthew centrowitz jr became the first u.s man in over 100 years to win the gold medal in the 1500 meter race at which olympic games yeah uh we're checked in all right uh we can't do worse than colorado's checked in the Penix Mightier, you guys can talk it out and let me know your answer and wager. So, Scott, you're trying to figure out where it was. Yeah, Beijing, I think, was 2020, but was held in 21. 2021. I'm, I'm, it's, it's a fairly, it's a fairly recent accomplishment because he's, he's gone on to be fairly big in the, the social media scene within the, the tail end athletes of Olympic running, but it wasn't, I don't think it was as far back as 2016. It can't be seven years ago. I don't think just based on how old he is. So I, I, what's, I say, let's just go with Beijing. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah that works for me. I don't have anything on this. I, I think that's, I so, think math uh, is in my head. Uh, yeah, and we're checking in with Beijing for 75 points. Okay, and we can't do worse than Colorado. What'd you guys have for an answer and a wager? Uh, we wanted to be nice and let these guys talk it out since we wagered zero on this. Um, but uh, so I'll let Andrew just pick whatever city and year he wants to say. Oh, we have to have a city and a year, well, or, or, or no, the other. Doesn't just count. one. Uh, I just sent the three most recent. I don't know. Uh, Rio, I don't know. Wasn't that there was one in Rio in like 20, 2016. I think it was my mother in law at the time. That's where Michael Phelps last went. Just Rio, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm just mm-hmm. all right. So Rio for zero. Yep. Yeah. Well, one team is correct, but we'll be receiving zero oh, points. Good. The correct answer oh. is the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Summer Olympics. Before that. <laughs> Mel Shepard won the gold at the 1908 London Olympics Mm -hmm. and Jim Lightbody won the gold at the 1904 St. Louis Olympics. And David Lux must be a big fan since Matthew was an Oregon duck. Yes. But a lot of Olympic uh, track and field people are from Oregon, right? A lot of them go there. 
David was also a fan of Jim Lightbody because he saw it in person when when he won the gold. So and Mel Shepard, he saw them both. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say, what about Leon Heavybody? <laughs> <laughs> he was better in uh in like weightlifting. Well, and also uh, your reigning Pac-12 uh, track and field champions, uh, Washington Huskies. Well, with that, the game got closer again. Uh, the difference is now 180. So the game is not necessarily over yet for we can't do worse than Colorado. We'll have to see what happens with question number four. So question four in the category of red heat. What Cincinnati red fireballer broke the MLB record for most 100 plus mile an hour pitches in a game with 39 on April 16th, 2022. Note, this record is during the pitch tracking era, which started in 2008. We can check in. Oh, I misread The that. Penix Mightier has checked in, so we can't do worse in Colorado. You can talk it out. you got a couple of minutes to come up with an answer and let me know your wager. I think it's Hunter Green. Okay, yeah. Disregard what I said. I answered, you know, Red's fireballer before I... Heard yeah, it's got the year. Was yeah, I mean, Hunter Green's the guy, you know, he's the guy that's throwing triple digits now for them. Yeah. And April 2022 is probably his first or second start, one of his earlier starts. So right before he got hurt, because that's all he does. So I'm good with that if you are. That's fine. All right, we're going to check in Hunter Green for 100 points. All right, and the Penix Mightier, what did you guys have for an answer and a wager? You know, it's the it's the thing now, right? Every team's got a bunch of guys that can throw a hundred, but it's a lot of starters now that throw over a hundred. And uh, yep, knew it was uh, that gigantic man of glass, Hunter Green, and we checked in with that for ninety points. Both teams will be getting their points. Correct answer is Hunter Green. Uh, the previous record was thirty three by Jacob Degrom in twenty twenty one followed by Jordan Hicks with 29 in 2019 and Nathan Eovaldi with 28 in 2015. I mean, all of Jordan Hicks's pitches were a hundred mile an hour fastballs in that game because he only pitches like two innings. <laughs> so for him to throw 29 of them, <laughs> so he was well, just humping I, up a uh, hundred mile an hour yeah. fastballs. And... Well, and like, that's the thing with Hunter Green is I, is I think I remember like, it, you know, cause this, when this happened, cause it was like his second start, like Scott said, or something like that. And he threw like 75 or like 80% fastballs. And so yep. when that's all you're throwing, because you didn't really feel confident throwing anything else, then yeah, break the record. The game has come to an end, and here are the final scores. We can't do worse than Colorado finishes with 200 points. And our clipboard captains of the game, who are receiving the coveted Nathan Peterman Award with 370 points, is the Penix Mightier. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Andrew, uh, is there anything that you'd like to say before we call it a night? Thanks for having me on. I know I got on a little bit late. My bad about that. I was hoping to get you know, two and one. I, apparently, I'm now one and two. So I guess uh, I have to come back on to try to even out the odds again and get it to two and two. But, uh, chugga, 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 yeah. chugga, chugga, chugga. Oh, yeah. Now, Owen, oh, was that your 12th straight loss, Scott? It's 12, 12 in a row. Woo, woo. Sorry to Scott. Literally the one that I guessed was like the one that might have made the difference and we didn't even bet anything and I knew nothing about it. I told him I'll never get that right. I was confident about the basketball until it was about a coach. But, oh well. Scott, sure. how about yourself? Do uh, you have anything that you'd uh, like to say? No. I don't. No, this was this was fun. Um, it's my first, first win, which is nice. Um, so... Thank you, Marcus. It was uh, it was good. Happy that we all learned that wealth is power. Uh, that's important. <laughs> wealth is a superpower. <laughs> wealth is a superpower. Uh, Batman doesn't just have fun toys. But uh, no, this was a, a good time. Always a fun way to um, spend the spend the Sunday evening um, into a, into a busy work week. So appreciate it. Wonderful, and Scott, thank you for being a part of our Patreon team. We really appreciate that. Absolutely. And on behalf of Marcus, Scott, and myself, along with the rest of the Benchwarmers, we'd like to say thanks for listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. Have a 
that ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the ball. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.